Hello guys, welcome to the video. My name is Tyler and today I'm going to be talking to you about the HSCP scholarship, including why I'm talking about it, uh, what it is, and its benefits and obligations. So the reason I'm making this video today is because there's actually not a lot of information out there about the scholarship. And so I wanted to provide information to you if you were interested in getting the scholarship for yourself, like looking into it, or if you were friends or family of mine and just wanted to learn more about it. So HSCP stands for Health Services Collegiate Program, and it's a scholarship offered exclusively through the Navy that offers financial incentive for those in a post-bachelor medical program. So that could be doctors, dentists, optometrists, pharmacists, such as myself. And uh, in exchange for the financial incentive, you have to serve a certain number of years in the Navy. So before I actually go into the benefits of the scholarship, there's one big thing that I need to mention. And that is, the scholarship actually doesn't cover any tuition. In fact, it doesn't cover any of your educational expenses. Excuse me? So let me get this straight. It's a scholarship, but it actually doesn't cover any of your tuition fees or books or anything like that? Yes, that's correct. However, they do give you a substantial amount of money every month that you can use towards your tuition. And depending on how, on how expensive your school is, this may or not help cover all of your educational expenses. Go on. So how it works after you've been accepted for the scholarship is you are treated like you're an active duty military member at the E6 rank. So since you'll be considered an E6 while you're in school, that means you'll be getting E6 base pay, housing allowance, and food allowance. And these are going to be the three primary sources of money that you'll be seeing come in every single month. And just to clarify, all the numbers that I'll be using today are going to be using the 2020 numbers since that's when I'm making this video. Um, all these numbers are public knowledge, so you're, you can go online and look them up yourself if it's this year or a different year. So starting out with the base pay for an E6, that is $2,694 a month and that is taxed. Food allowance is going to be the same for everybody and for this year that's about $372 a month. Housing allowance, on the other hand, varies greatly depending on your location. So for the remainder of this video, I'm just going to use my housing allowance based on where I am. Um, so I go to school at Oregon State University, so that's where, um, that's how they determine my housing allowance. And for 2020, the housing allowance for here is $1,626 a month. The nice thing about both housing allowance and food allowance is they are both untaxed. <laughs> Alright, so let's add all these numbers up and see what we get every month. So being a unmarried guy, I get about 23% taken out of my base pay and taxes. So that leaves us with $2,074. Add that to our $1,626 for housing allowance and our $372 for food allowance. And that gives us a grand total of $4,072-ish. Not bad. And if you multiply this number by 12, you get just over $48,000 a year. And all this money is going right in your pocket. You can do whatever you want with it, like pay for school, or pay for school, or maybe even pay for school. So $48,000 may or may not be enough to cover your entire tuition. I know like for doctors and dentists, they uh, have to pay a lot more for their schooling. But for me, a pharmacy student, I pay about $27,000 a year. And so uh, after living expenses, this is um, 48,000 is about enough for me to cover both my living expenses and my tuition. Sounds like you're gonna be cutting it kind of close. If you have to serve in the military afterwards, is it really even worth it? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's talk about both the non-financial benefits as well as how much you'll actually get paid once you're in the military. And then I think we might have an answer. So in my opinion, the most important of these non-financial benefits is access to TRICARE. And so what this is, it's basically the military's version of health insurance. So it covers um, your medical expenses, your dental expenses, vision, hearing. Um, they cover pretty much everything. 
Um, you may have some small like copay or deductible, something along those lines, but it's pretty, pretty good insurance. This is especially nice for somebody who just turned 26 and got kicked off their parents' insurance and doesn't want to pay the school $300 a month for the school insurance. Why? I won't go into a ton of the other non-financial benefits in this video, but some just to name a few are the um, military retirement plan. There's, uh, you start accruing leave as soon as you start the scholarship, which is awesome. Um, let's see, you have access to uh, military bases. And so what that means is if you're like near or at a military base, you can get in, use the, um, the gym facilities. You can use the commissary, which is like a, like a military grocery store. So if you live in a state that has like taxes, you won't have to pay taxes. I live in Oregon, so I don't pay taxes anyway, which is great. Um, and usually these grocery stores have like, uh, or like a, a discounted price, so you'll get good pricing on food and uh, at gas stations, stuff like that. Um, let's see. You also get help with um, travel expenses, and I can make a whole video alone on these non-financial benefits that the military offers, but um, the one I want to spend the most time on is uh, actually the fact that you start accruing time and service when you start the scholarship. Time and service? Why does that even matter? So time and service actually matters for two reasons. One, it will help determine the amount of pay that you get once you actually start serving in the military. And two, it'll actually count towards your retirement. And so let's say I wanted to stay in the military the full 20 years. My scholarship starting a half a year into my schooling. Uh, pharmacy is a four year program. And so I'll have um, the benefits of the scholarship for three and a half years before I even start serving in the military. So if I wanted to stay the full serve a full 20 years to get my retirement, I would only actually have to serve in the, in the Navy for 16 and a half years because I'll already have served, served three and a half years while I'm in school. So to determine how much you'll be making once you actually start serving in the military, um, you can actually look at a pay chart online. It goes over all the military ranks and how much they make, and it's based on the number of years they've served. And so for me, since I'm getting my doctorate degree, when I graduate and become a, I'll become an officer and I'll be an 03 rank, which is lieutenant in the military. And since I'll have already served uh, through my scholarship three and a half years, I'll have over three years in service. So if you look at the pay chart and look at 03 rank for uh, over three years in service for 2020, that's going to be about just over $5,300 a month, which is pretty good money. And don't forget, not only will you be getting your base pay, but you'll also be getting your housing allowance and your food allowance. So I actually kind of ran low on time and I got places to be. So part of this video is going to be on the road. Don't forget to buckle up. All right, so now that we're on the road, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the obligations of the scholarship. So like what's required and what you'll have to do um, both during and uh, after school. And yes, for those of you who noticed, that is the microphone right here. But you know what? It fits well there, so you can suck it up, buttercup. So first I'm going to start with the obligation of the scholarship for after you finish school. So what happens after you graduate is you'll attend this five week off, it's called five week training. It's called officer development school. After you finish officer development school, you'll be commissioned as a United States Navy officer. Um, and depending on how much schooling you have, is depending on what uh, rank you'll achieve after you finish. And the requirement for how long you have to serve depends on how many years of uh, scholarship you received. So if you received a three-year scholarship, you would get, uh, you would have to serve for three years. One thing to note is that the minimum is three years. So if you only receive a two-year scholarship, you're only going to, you're still gonna have to serve for at least three years. So for my case, I was offered a three and a half year scholarship. 
So they actually round up in that case. So when I graduate pharmacy school, I will have a four-year service obligation to the Navy. So as far as during school, there's actually not a whole lot of obligations or rules that you have to follow. Um, there are a few. One of those is you have a meeting that you have to do with your recruiter every month. Every other month that has to be in person, and then the other month that can be over Skype. As far as grooming goes, even though you're considered an active duty military member, um, at this point obviously I haven't attended boot camp or anything like that, so they don't, and I don't have like a uniform that I get to wear, so they don't actually require you to fall within the grooming standard, so if I wanted to grow my hair long or grow a beard, I could do that, um, not that I'd want to. Uh, maybe a beard, if I could grow one I would. You do have to complete two physical training tests a year. And what that looks like is you have to complete a mile and a half run in a certain amount of time, as well as um, a certain number of push-ups in two minutes and a certain number of sit-ups in two minutes. And the number that you have to complete is based on your whether you're male or female, as well as your age bracket. So my age bracket falls between um, 25 and 29, because I'm 26. And so for me, I'll put the numbers up on the screen right here, um, but for me I think that's about a uh, 14 minutes. They give me 14 minutes to do the mile and a half run, and I have to do somewhere in the ballpark of 44 push-ups, and I don't know, 50 sit-ups. Like I said, they'll be up on the screen here for you to see. Along with the physical training tests, you'll also, every two years, have to go to MEPS and get a complete physical. And I can do a completely other video on MEPS because there's so much that's involved in that. But I went through MEPS almost two years ago now. It'll be two years in June. And so I'll have to get another physical done before June. As far as grades and GPA go, they actually only require you to maintain a 2.5 GPA which is pretty low to be honest. I'm actually kind of surprised that uh, they don't they don't up that requirement a little bit. I mean, the, the requirement is higher when you apply for the scholarship, but after you get it, you just need to maintain a 2.5, which is nothing for this guy. One thing I forgot to mention is that there actually isn't any special summer trainings or anything like that. And you're still getting paid during this time, so you could spend the summers traveling or working and making extra money, whatever you want, really. Now it's time to ask the question, is the scholarship worth it? And that varies between both like what you're going to school for, how much you'll make in the civilian sector, and how much you'll make as a military member in whatever field you're in. For pharmacists specifically, after pharmacists graduate, I think the starting salary is between 100 and 120,000. And what I'll be making in the military after taxes, because remember, I'll get that housing allowance and the food allowance on top of my base pay, which we already went over, is about $5,300 a month. If you do the math, I'll be making about the same. It'll be it, it'll be pretty close what I'll be making to an actual pharmacist. So the pay drop isn't that drastic. Now, if you're a dentist or a doctor, you're going to be making significantly more money as a civilian right out of school. But you also have a lot more in loans and everything. So for me personally, I think it's well worth uh, the commitment. But like I said before, it highly depends on your situation, what career path you're going down, and if you think you can handle the military life. I also think it'll be pretty cool to travel and see the world um, in the Navy. There's so many different places and bases you could go. Um, on the top of my list uh, is Japan. They have a few different medical facilities there that I can serve at. Um, Italy is another one. Or Spain, Hawaii. I think these four years are going to be a great opportunity for me to travel the world, get some experience, and obviously I'll be financially set. So I don't think it's a bad deal at all. Well, I think I'm going to stop the video there. I hope you guys found this video very informative and educational and all that. 
because um, like I said, the, uh, the reason I made this is there's not a lot of information about there about the HSCP, so I just wanted to throw it out there to both, like I said, my friends and family, as well as those of you who are interested in getting the scholarship for yourself. If you guys want me to do more videos in the future on how to get, how I went about at least getting the scholarship, uh, what your chances are, and uh, anything else really. I'm open to doing videos on anything. Uh, I, I do plan on making one about the uh, the PT test when it's time for me to do that. I think I'm going to do that in May. So I'll give you guys a little snapshot of what I'm doing to prepare for that as well as um, how it goes. Um, or if you want to know how what MEPS is like or anything like that, I'm more than happy to do videos on that. So just uh, comment down below and we'll see what we can do. Peace.